it's always important to be constructive with whatever you do. We want to be constructive, even with our conversations, even when we roast each other. It should be constructive roasting because we should learn something from the roasting. Sometimes the roasting can make you better. What's up, Sonny G? I see you in there, brother. I see you, Adonis. Just waiting on everybody to pile on in here. We're, we're coming on in here heavy. Because I want the Blue Lives Matter crowd to come on here. I really want them to come in here. I want that Blue Lives Matter crowd to come in. Now, what I want to discuss, we're, we're talking about everything that went down there in Texas with the tragic mass shooting with that um, white Hispanic man, 18-year-old man who shot up the school with all those babies in it. And what we're learning now, a lot of information is coming out. And we're learning that a lot of officers were down there and them officers didn't do a damn thing. I, I want to holler at the Blue Lives Matter crowd. So now people are complaining. So many stories and so much evidence is coming out that those officers down there in Texas they sat there while that gunman was in that school for an hour massacring them babies. And them officers stood their asses outside and didn't do anything. In fact, some of them were trying to engage him outside the school. I think they were engaging this guy for about 12 minutes on the outside before he went inside. So they just let the guy go inside. And I'm reading the reports. They were like, well, we didn't want to go inside because we didn't want to get shot. Well, damn it, it's your job to put your life on the line to protect the community. The brother up there in Buffalo, remember, he was a former cop and he was a security guard. That brother put it on the line. That's bravery. That brother Aaron up there in Buffalo who got killed by that race, uh, white supremacist. That brother put it on the line doing real police work trying to serve and protect. That brother tried to do the right thing. That's real bravery. And story after story is coming out about this Texas situation, how law enforcement just kept lying. They've been lying nonstop. They have to flip and, and go back and remix their lies because they have to hide the fact that they were cowards. The police down there were acting like cowards. I want the Blue Lives Matter folks to get in here. And now you see a lot of people online who are on that Blue Lives Matter wave. Now they're copping pleas talking about how incompetent the police were. How could this have happened? How, how could they let the babies get slaughtered like that? Oh, my God, they were so cowardly. Oh, these cops are horrible these cowardly, cowardly officers. So we're hearing that narrative. And we're looking at them as black people like, hey, we've been telling you that these folks are carrying out these cowardly deeds within law enforcement. Black people have been telling you that you've let complete cowards infiltrate law enforcement. And see, family, the universe has a way of bringing back certain energy full circle folks were okay with all of these cowards within law enforcement as long as they were attacking and targeting and ambushing black people oh i want the blue lives matter folks to come on in here a lot even the alt-right people were are complaining about cops that jack posevic whatever his name is he was posting something like oh I, these officers were incompetent oh, i can't believe this happened now jack posevic this guy sits up and tries to justify every cowardly ambush shooting that an officer does on a black person don't cop please now don't sit here and say oh my god what's wrong with law enforcement now that they've allowed some non-black people to be harmed in mass don't sit here and act like this happened overnight We've been telling you that law enforcement is infiltrated by damn cowards. The stuff that they do to us is cowardly. And the dominant society has sat up and let it happen. And y'all thought it was cute. When they're busting in our homes, shooting us in our sleep, y'all sit there justifying that cowardice. When they ran up in there and shot our sister, Breonna Taylor, y'all sat there and justified those, those cowards doing that. 
when that cowardly race soldier shot the little boy Tamir Rice, y'all sat there and justified that and didn't punish that coward and gave him another job. Case after case after case, these cowardly race soldiers within law enforcement are allowed to do cowardly ambush killings, which incentivizes more cowards to join the force. You see how the, the energy works there? Coddling and allowing cowardly race soldiers to go around ambushing innocent, unarmed black people, and y'all cockeying and kikiing online about it, thinking that it's cute, that has come full circle. You let these cowards just get away with murder. You sit there protecting them while the department lies, the the police union lies, everybody's lying and covering up each other's lies, the DA is lying, the judges are lying and going along with the non-justice and everybody think it's cute as long as it's happening to black people. So now you've set a standard where cowards can flood law enforcement. You don't have no real cops in law enforcement like you need them. You got a bunch of race soldiers and punks and cowards that you allow in law enforcement and then you fund them you incentivize them so now when some real police work needs to be done like down in texas they needed to stop a real killer instead of some black person jaywalking or some black girl in her bed sleep when it's time to do some real damn police work they cower out like bitches and stand outside the school and let babies get slaughtered and y'all say oh damn we didn't know they were cowards oh yes you did a lot of you got blood on your hands. You've coddled cowards. And now you want to complain. Y'all sat here and let these people engage in cowardly acts for the longest. And we warned you. And now you have a, a law enforcement um, regimen all over the country that's full of cowards who ain't going to bust a grape when some things go down for real. The, the universe kind of brings certain energy right back around. And people shouldn't have to allow that energy to come around and they sacrifice their children because of bad energy that they put out. That's horrible what happened to those babies. And again, I keep bringing up Kyle Rittenhouse's name. Y'all not going to run from Kyle Rittenhouse because, again, the New York Times, they put out a story yesterday talking about a memo from the FBI saying that right now there's a massive uptick in active mass shooting cases. Duh. Yes, there's a massive uptick. You know why? Because of the Kyle Rittenhouse effect. Y'all thought Kyle Rittenhouse, that little stunt y'all pulled by co-signing Kyle Rittenhouse, y'all thought that was cute too, didn't you? You thought that supporting that degenerate Kyle Rittenhouse and that brazen act of, of murder basically y'all thought it was cute to support him and then make a hero out of him because that was your way of sticking it to black folks and now that has encouraged a lot of copycat teen shooters that set in motion a sorry horrible precedent and now the dominant society, they want to save face. They don't want to admit that that's what it is. They don't want to admit that they overplayed the white supremacist hand. See, they got desperate with Kyle Rittenhouse because they needed a white supremacy win so bad. They needed a win with Kyle Rittenhouse because, you know, black people were protesting and black people were shutting down police stations and defunding police. And so they the white supremacists desperately needed a win. So they went into this whole sloppy ass support with Kyle Rittenhouse. They did a Hail Mary with him. And that nonsense you saw was blatant white supremacy in that courtroom inside and out. And they know it. They thought, OK, hey, we're still in charge. We still we're still in control. We pulled a fast one with Kyle just to let everybody know our position in the system of white supremacy. So now that energy is coming right back around, biting that ass. Where are the Blue Lives Matter people? I would love to hear from you. Let me open up the phone line so I can talk to the family in here tonight. Let's get Anonymous Miami. Let's get Anonymous Miami in here. And let's get some more folks on deck while we're waiting on Anonymous Miami. 
Anonymous Miami, where you at, man? And while we're waiting on Anonymous Miami, we'll get Cloud in here. Anonymous, you want to turn your microphone on? Anonymous, I can't hear you, buddy. Uh, I'm not Anonymous Miami. I don't. That's not okay. even better. Okay, you're Clout. You're the Clout guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what's up, Clout? Uh, nothing much, actually. Uh, been a while. Tariq, how's it been? It's good. I, I don't remember speaking with you, though. You kind of, you're vaguely, rem I, I vaguely remember you, but can you refresh my memory? Yeah, what, you, did we talk, what did we talk about uh, last you, time? You told me to pull the dildo out my pussy. <laughs> which okay, was what were you doing? Good you, okay, what, what were you doing? I think we were talking about Pompeii uh, and how it's dusty old corpses. <clears throat> we okay. were talking about how Pompeii is just a bunch of dusty old corpses. That was right. a couple months ago, though. So, <laughs> now, are, you, are, you an, are you an Italian guy? Uh, partially. Half, oh. yeah. Oh yeah, you're half Italian and half what else? Irish. Oh, okay, so you're white man. So, how do you feel about what's going on? Are you still um, team Blue Lives Matter, sir? Uh, to be honest, the whole Blue Lives Matter thing to me personally, I was never a part of. I mean, I support policing as like a general function of society, but police, uh, and, and to be honest, the government has always done too much. The ATF, Waco, um. Ruby Ridge, all that shit has always rubbed me the wrong way. I don't think police are formed the way they need to be. Even and that, that's coming from somebody who massively disagrees with. Uh, I won't say a lot. I think we we agree on a lot, but uh, who who massively disagrees with you on some things? Like what? What do you disagree with? Uh, <clears throat> well, one, I don't think Kyle Rittenhouse. The the whole case had a lot to do with Black Lives Matter. I understand that it was at a Black Lives Matter protest, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, it was an anti-black racism protest. It had absolutely everything to do with Black Lives Matter or Black people. I won't say Black Lives Matter because that's a code word. So, you do you support Kyle Rittenhouse? You support the decision with Kyle Rittenhouse? I, I do. I mean, it was self-defense, and he didn't even shoot any black guys. It was it was two white but, people who that, attacked him. If he was really a white supremacist, he would have shot a couple of black dudes who were, weren't doing it. Right, but he shot two people who yeah. were attacking him. Yeah, no, well, they weren't attacking him. He went there premeditated. He wanted to shoot some black people. He was trying to ambush some black people. We got it on video where he was approaching black people trying to pretend to be a medic and they called him out. They said, hey, man, you were pointing a gun at us earlier. So we have proof that he was out here waving that gun and, and, and brandishing that gun around black people. And it was white people trying to protect black people. And those are the ones who got shot. And white supremacist society will often use certain white people as proxies for black people. And the fact that he threw up that white supremacist hand sign after the fact, that kind of shows that it was really about black people, sir. So all of that, I mean, he, all that self-defense nonsense, that's just some white not say so talk, sir. What would you call the part about self-defense when a guy with a gun was approaching him, like um, chasing him? Um, uh, he was running around there waving that gun at people, okay? And they were trying to defend people from Kyle Rittenhouse. He was out there with white supremacists. He was out there with the Boogaloo Boys and this thing where white supremacists and white supremacist suspects are the only people who can defend themselves, but everybody else can, just like with Zimmerman. Zimmerman can defend himself, but Trayvon Martin couldn't defend himself. So that's just, I'm white and I say so talk, sir. And, and the ramifications of that we're seeing now. How's that working? Wasn't it a Mexican guy who shot up the school, though? Mm-hmm. White. He was still white. No, no matter what, what part of um, the world he was from, he was still white. So I thought he was Mexican. Anyway. but um, There's no such thing as a Mexican race, but he was white. He was white. Well, okay. Spanish, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Spanish or white. That's white. Well, I mean, yeah, but yeah, the Spanish people, they're like mixed between like the don't, Native Americans over there. And the, uh, still, they classify themselves as white. They don't look at themselves as Native. That's why yeah. so many white supremacist groups got so-called Hispanics in them. The Proud Boys got a whole bunch of Hispanics. Enrique Terrio, um, all of the, these white supremacist groups. Nick Fuentes, he's another white supremacist running around here. Y'all have a whole bunch of Hispanic white supremacists. So, Nick yeah, Fuentes is Mexican? He's Hispanic. That's why that I'm name. Is, I, that, yeah, the, the I name Fuentes. Nick Fuentes. 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 Yeah, that's not a that's not an Irish name like yours, sir. I thought that might have been like Polish or something. I don't know. Fuentes? No, 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 no. He uh, he's team white supremacy. 
So, yeah. but, but so your ideology, man, how's that working? That's not working for you. I, I mean, your, your ideology of supporting a degenerate like Kyle Rittenhouse. Now that's, that's instigating. Well, I, just, I don't a see copy. how that ties that's, into that's, a school that's, shooting. That's, that's instigating of a copycat, sir. And how's that working now? Well, can I, can I ask you a question? What, but how, I'm asking you, I'm asking I can you hear how, this with, with uh, the top uh, shooting in Buffalo. Oh, with the okay. Buffalo shooting, I can understand even like the sentiment, right? That he was a white supremacist. He measured mm -hmm. it in his, uh, what, what do you call it? His manifesto. Right. right. He went in there trying to shoot uh, black people. And when he found a white guy he was about to shoot, he said, sorry. So I can get that. But with the school shooting, I just, what evidence is there that this was even motivated by, right? Did we even have a manifesto yet? Like, no, no, just the, action just making the assumption, just the action itself, just the action itself. It motivates him because it keep it keeps happening over and over again. And there's an uptick and there has to be some type of common denominator for the uptick, according to the FBI. And since last year, right around the time Cal got off, there has been an uptick. So the common denominator is Cal Rittenhouse, which I said then I said, this is going to inspire others. You understand? So that's how that works. But like in many, many, many people in my own eyes, this that was a self-defense case. I don't think it's logical to link self-defense with a with a, uh, a school shooting, an unprovoked shooting of children. And I agree. But with it wasn't. Them. But the, uh, self-defense is just I'm white and I say so talk. That's not self-defense. Tariq. OK, let me ask you a question. Mm hmm. Let's say you're in the middle of middle of the street and a crack. OK, OK, let's OK. Let me ask. Let's what are you you're, about to, you're about to do some crazy. What about ism? Let's just ask a simple. What about ism? Name a case. Not even a what about ism. Just name a case that's equally similar to Kyle Rittenhouse where a black person went to another place with a gun, shot some people and was let off because of self-defense. Don't, don't bring me, don't bring me another scenario where a black person was at home somewhere and they shot somebody. No, show me a scenario where a black person took a gun, went to another state, to another location, killed some people for whatever reason. And they let him claim self-defense. Name a case in any point in American history. I, I don't know any because I have there you go. Anywhere. That's but, proof, but hold on, that's, but that's, that's different. Proof right I don't that know. I could probably look into it. That's, that's proof that is that's proof that it's racism because when you cannot name a case involving a black person of equal status with the equal standards, that means it's white supremacy. Okay, that's the proof right there. But the Kyle Rittenhouse case was a national case. It was televised. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. it, if if we're talking about th there probably is a case that exists under no, pretty doesn't. similar circumstances okay but it how doesn't. am I supposed to know that if it's not it, nationally because it doesn't televised? exist it doesn't exist you've There's gone no through the records you, you've looked through the files it, it doesn't exist because I understand what white supremacy does and how white supremacy worked and I've looked I've looked to see anything remotely close doesn't exist at all and we know that you know that so, you know, don't don't talk in bad faith. You know, the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing was about maintaining white supremacy and white supremacy is all about immunity from law. That's the carrot that they dangle in front of the white supremacists, the, the rank and file. That's why the system is being maintained for so long. You get to get a certain immunity from law. You get to kill people. You can go out here and rape people and you'll get a slap on the wrist. You can cause a resurrection. You can go raid the Capitol building and. You'll get a slap on the wrist. That's the, the carrot that they dangle to the white supremacists. That's why they keep it up so long. Now, these bad faith arguments are just, you know, they fall. What immunity down. are the school shooters getting, though, and the top um, shooter, the Buffalo shooter? What immunities um, are they really getting? Aren't they going um, through trial right now? The Buffalo shooter right now, he came out alive. They didn't mow him down, okay? They didn't shoot this guy down like they shoot innocent black people who are unarmed. Also, they're already setting up a mentally ill defense with this guy. Also, they're lone wolfing him. He was clearly connected to other people. They're not doing any recos against no other people but him. That's another privilege of white supremacy. They don't they don't all in you. They don't 
bring in a whole bunch of other people to hit you with, with, with RICO charges. They always loan wolf them and, and then coddle them and say, oh, my God, they were mentally ill. They were bullied as kids. They make up every excuse. And then they turn you into a de facto hero right before they take you to Burger King, like right. um, um, like Dylan Roof. Sir. So Doesn't yeah, Dylan Roof get, get like life in prison? Dylan Roof, um, in, yeah, uh, Dylan Roof. Yeah, when you kill somebody and basically confess because they tried to do the mentally ill thing on him, he wanted to go to jail. He wanted to be a martyr. You have the white supremacists, they have to damn near beg to go to jail. Okay. They were trying to get the mentally ill thing going on with him out there in um, Nashville. I think either Nashville or Memphis, this white supremacist shot up a Waffle House with a bunch of black people. And one of the black customers whooped his ass, by the way. And they are putting that case on hold because they said that the white man was mentally unstable to go to trial. So that's the privilege you get as a person who believes in white supremacy in the dominant society. You Doesn't get a certain that. immunity from law. You, show me any black people who go out here and kill a bunch of folks and they say that they're just mentally ill and they can't go to court. Or even they're mentally ill and they were bullied. When do black people get that type of treatment? Uh, I don't know personally of any cases. Well, never, but never. It's, the I, word I, is never. I, I, I want to ask you a question real quick. Doesn't okay. the mental insanity plea have more to do with like the defense attorney? They're the one Okay, there you go. I, okay, let me get some more people because um, every time we debunk one of his bad faith arguments, he just goes into another bad faith argument. So, all right. He, he just got boring to me. Okay. I don't want to keep debunking bad faith arguments. Okay. Because he'll be here doing what about isms all day, and that's another thing, black folks. Watch out for the what about ism. Well, what about well, what if what if what if Cal Rittenhouse was in a desert in, in a desert, and there was a, a llama and a, and a camel chasing him, and he was in the in the desert by himself. He only had his gun, and there was a camel chasing him, and then there was a llama, and then he shot the camel, and then the humane society wanted to sue him. Couldn't isn't that self defense? Doesn't he have a right to shoot a camel? Shut the hell up. With these what about isms. And black folks, watch out for the what about isms. The white supremacists are very good at deflective what about isms. That's part of the benign neglect of um, undermining um, black suffering. And we have to stop going for that. You know, um, the Buffalo shooting, they had that. And then right after buf the Buffalo shooting, there was a, um, a shooting at a church out here, uh, um, an Asian church. One Asian man went in a church and shot, some, shot another Asian person. So the white media and the political structure, they deliberately framed that as a hate crime, which it wasn't a hate crime. This was Asian on Asian crime. But they were talking about, well, he... The, the shooter shot the person because he didn't like his I, ideologies. It was some convoluted stretch of the imagination that they pretzeled together to turn into a hate crime. And they wanted to make it a hate crime so that they could conflate it with the Buffalo story. OK. They wanted to conflate that into a hate crime. So now they've been running around out here on the, the local media talking about Black and Asian leaders are getting together to talk about Buffalo, the hate crime in Buffalo and the hate crime at the Asian church. Asians and black leaders are getting together. I said, oh, here comes the trick bag. And I told black people, whenever they do that, the trick bag is coming. What they do, they get a black tragedy and then latch on some type of aggrievement from another group and try to make it equal and say, oh, look at these these minorities are suffering, black and Latino, black and Asian, black and LGBT, they're suffering together. So now let's do something. What are we gonna do? Let's do something for the other group except black. You see, and that's exactly what they're doing now. Did y'all see today, there was an announcement that Biden is uh, uh, inviting that BTS group, he's inviting them to the White House to talk about anti-Asian hate crimes. They're going to be talking about anti-Asian hate crimes. We've been damn near begging for them to do something and have an anti-black hate crime bill out here. We've had to damn beg and they are ignoring us. You had black people get slaughtered up there in Buffalo and they're sitting up here talking about they're going to have a pop group from Asia come over here to talk about anti-Asian hate crimes. The Biden administration and the Democrats are spitting in our faces. 
where are the Biden sexuals, these fools who sit up and still support these folks? And we've been talking about trying to get an anti-black hate crime. We've been talking about this online. And one lady who's a Democrat and she's some white disability advocate. She's an advocate for disabled people. So she hopped in the mentions. We're talking about getting some hate crime bills for black people. She hopped in the, the comments talking about, hey, what about disabled people? Blacks and disabled, we're just the same. Black and disabled people, we go through the same suffering. So what about disabled people? Disabled people don't get this and disabled people don't get that. Ma'am, if you don't roll your ass on somewhere with that. Man, we got a whole bunch of disabled white supremacists out here. Y'all owe too. Y'all got a bunch of clan members and skinheads in wheelchairs. No, no, no. Y'all not going to latch yourselves on to us. They'll what about ism us to death with this nonsense, man. White disabled people were not Jim Crowed. White disabled people were not enslaved. White disabled people were not lynched. White disabled people's businesses were not burned down and destroyed. White disabled people were not mass incarcerated. White disabled people are not being executed by race soldiers. Don't disrespect us and don't let people disrespect us trying to conflate their issues with us. It ain't the same and they know it's not the same and we should be offended that they do that. They know who to do that to and not do it to. They don't go around Jewish people talking about, yeah, me being disabled is just like y'all being in the Holocaust. They don't play that game. They know not to do that and we shouldn't let them do that nonsense with us. We got to start checking these people, family. We don't have no allies and we don't need no allies, truth be told. There's enough of us. See, they, they, they've run this minority game on us, family, that we feel like we, we're, we think our numbers are extremely small, so we need all these allies. We've got to get some people to help us. No, we don't. We do not. Because number one, family, there's more than 12% of the population of black people. That's another con game that they've been running. There was a brother earlier on um, Twitter. He was some type of, um, he worked with the DNC. He worked with the Democratic Party somehow. And I think he worked, um, he was some kind of insider with the Obama campaign. And he said during the Obama administration, they did some type of real comprehensive um, census taking. They, it was something they did that was not like regular census taking. They did like a, like a deep dive census taking. And he said they really uncovered that the black population is around 34 percent. But the Obama administration didn't really want to put that information out. And truth be told, I believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly. I absolutely believe that. I believe that the black population could absolutely well be 34 percent or damn near 40 percent. Black people are grossly undercounted for a couple of reasons. Number one, we're undercounted because a lot of black folks don't like to fill out those census forms, myself included. I don't like filling it out. We don't like to talk to government workers. A lot of black people, you know, we kind of be under the radar to a certain degree. And we all know y'all know black folks who ain't on social media. Y'all know black folks who ain't. He, who don't want to be on the radar like that. We all know some black folks who ain't trying to take pictures. They ain't trying to be all on Facebook. You know, you, you know how to find them. You find them when you find them. But, you know, you got some black folks who are under the radar like that. So a lot of us are undercounted. And here's another thing. A lot, there's a lot of black people, especially the ones from, from other places, from the Caribbean and from certain East African countries, East African and North African countries. There's a lot of black people <clears throat> who come here who don't classify themselves as black. They actually classify themselves as white. That's another thing. A lot of people reclassify themselves. Um, on the census, they allow North Africans and East Africans to classify themselves as white, like Somalians, like um, um, Libyans, um, people like that, Moroccans. They let them classify themselves as white. Many of them be jet black, dark as hell. And we already know how the Dominicans get down and the Puerto Ricans, okay? There's a lot of dark Puerto Ricans. If you look at their paperwork, it says white. You understand? Hell, truth be told, even some Trinidadians. You got some Trinidadians who come over here and they be classifying themselves as white. There's a few of those dark 
Caribbeans, these people that's jet black, we think, okay, that's our brother, that's our sister. And in their paperwork, they got white. They think that they are dark European. It's heavy. So the, the, the actual black numbers are very, very high. They're higher than, than what people want to admit. And that's another thing why they don't want to give reparations, because I've said this before. If they start giving reparations, then you're going to really see the real numbers, because all these people who've been kind of lurking in the background, they're going to start making themselves known to get their check. And you're going to see a lot of people. You're going to see that black population swell up to 40 percent which is what we need to show anyway. Let me get some more people in here. How many people in here? Oh, there's a lot of folks in here. 1,500 people in here almost. Shout out to the new faces. Who is this? Still a little misfit. Let me get this sister in here. What's up, still a little misfit? Then I'm going to get vote like your life depends on it. Hello. Hey, little misfit. Hi, uh, Tariq. I wanted to talk about this subject. So did you yes, did you know that the governor of Texas said there are more shootings in Chicago every weekend than shootings in Texas? And I'm like, how you gonna bring us up? We ain't never had no school shooting. Yeah, they tried to use the dog whistle, I heard. He tried to dog whistle Chicago as a deflection. That's another thing. They've been trying to deflect, and, and thank you for the call, sis. They've been trying to deflect on some black folks so desperately. Obama tweeted something about the shooting, and then he mentioned um, the anniversary of George Floyd, and both the white supremacists started going in on Obama. They've been trying to deflect because this the, the white supremacists know that this is giving them an L. They're taking a major L with this. So white supremacy, they don't like to take no responsibility. They got to blame some other people. There's this one white boy, the suspected white supremacist down there in Texas. He ran up on this sister. She's a black newscaster. She was a black field reporter. He's running up on her, trying to front her off, talking about, hey, don't you think all of this coverage you're giving is, is sensationalizing the case and it's, it's creating copycat killers? And the sister was like, man, man what are you talking about? So he's trying to bully this sister. Now, this same suspected white supremacist who was saying that we looked at his social media. He's another uh, Cal Rittenhouse supporter. So these people understand that they are the ones who got blood on their hands. They set out here and help enable copycat killers like the Rittenhouses and other people. They promoted that nonsense and they know they got blood on their hands and they're doing everything they can to deflect Let's get vote like um, vote vote like your life depended on it. Yes, hello, hi, my name is Cindy. I'm from Michigan. Uh, I wanted to mention two things. One, that we're an open carry state, so everybody and their mama can run around with guns just galore, right? So mm -hmm. one day I'm at the mall in Oakland County, a uh, very white area, whatever. There's a white man in his car, a car full of guns, right? And I want to call the police and tell them there's a white man in here and he's out in his car. He's looking very angry, whatever. And his car is full of guns. Um, do you think that you should do something like I'll talk to him or whatever? But we ended up not calling because in a state where everybody is allowed to have a gun on them, you can have 15 long guns in your car. It's not a problem. I'm wondering when are the police supposed to know that there is a problem? How do they yeah. know that there's a problem? Yeah, yeah, man. Look, we have officers out here, man, who are just complete cowards. They're not going to bust a grape. The only time they come out is when it's time to ambush some unarmed, unsuspecting black person. That's what it is. We have a whole bunch of cowards in law enforcement right now. All of that brave boys in blue talk, that's going completely out the window. Let's get Mr. England. What's your name, sir? Yeah, Mr. Engaging. Mr. Engaging. Hey, what's up, OG Tyreek? Uh, how's it going, family? I'm good, man. What's going on your mind? Man, what's on my mind is we need to get some strong rock red brothers and sisters up in that ICE department and be ICE officers and get these brothers and sisters who ain't on reparations out the paint. And we need to get policies to protect those brothers and sisters that's on code. That's 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 yeah. that's the game plan that I'm hearing from what I'm seeing right now. And we need them police yes, we man. need them police power so we can boss up like big time. No doubt, man. Thank you for the call, brother. Let me get young um, L-Y-D, young L-Y-D in here. Young? Young L-Y-D. Where you at, man? 
Okay, brother. If you raise your hand, man, at least have your, your microphone ready. Let's get Jonathan. Let's get Jonathan Brown on. Let's get Jonathan Brown on. All right. Jonathan Brown, where you at, man? And while we're waiting on Jonathan, we'll get Shantae on here. Shantae, where you at? I'm right here, Tariq. Tariq, can I say two things, please? Yes, ma'am, real quick. All right, real quickly. Um, white people that we grew up with and been known for like hundreds of years, I don't know why y'all still keep playing that little same-ass trick with us like we don't know y'all. We, You not brand new to us at all, and y'all know that, so stop it. So then, secondly, and I mean respect, when I say this, I definitely give my condolences to the children and things like that that happened down in Texas. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the way, and forgive me for saying this, but the way that y'all expose us and no one takes up for us and y'all just look at us like trash, please get on CNN. CNN, come out. Fox, what is it called? Fox News? Please come out. Yeah. And please just tell people, basically, ask them if the Ask the parents and ask everybody that was a part of that. Do y'all forgive what happened? Do y'all forgive mm -hmm. these people? Yeah. I want the same yep. energy. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, beloved. See, yeah, I tweeted that earlier. You don't see them running around putting a microphone and camera in the, the victim's family's faces talking about do they forgive. You don't see that because they know how disrespectful that is. Shame on you, CNN. CNN is very good. They're the they're supposed to be liberal, and they go around black folks after the family members have been slaughtered, talking about, well, why don't you forgive the shooter? They know not to do that down there in Texas or any other place where there's not black people. They only pull that disrespectful nonsense with us, and we have to understand when people are being disrespectful towards us, we have to shut it down. We have to say we're not going to accept that. We have to call that out, family. We have to call out the disrespect. Let me get a couple of more people in here. Who is this person here? Um, Stokonomics. Who is this person? What's up? S Tokenomics. All right, hop on, brother. Because we got a lot of folks. Sorry about that, Tariq. I pressed the button on accident. No, oh, okay. My bad. Okay, brother. All right, let me get you out of here. Right, now you press a button by accident. Okay. So, Jonathan, you, you ready to chop it up? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, what's up, Jonathan? I can't, I couldn't hear you before. What's going on with you? What's up, man? Yeah, like I actually live in South Carolina. Sadly, I don't live in Marcel's district, but you know, I do support the brother from afar. I'm gonna donate to him. And you yeah. know, you actually shouted me out a few years ago on in 2019 when um Bernie Sanders people when Danny Glover and them had came down to South Carolina and I had asked them about the uh, reparations bill for Jews. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go, my man. Okay, shout you out again, my brother. All right, y'all hold it down out there. All right, let me see who we got here. We got a lot of folks in. All right, let's get um Ryan Hart in here. Let's get Ryan Hart in the building. What's up, Ryan? Get Ryan Hart in here. He's over there in the UK, from what I understand. What's up, Ryan? If you can turn your microphone on, that'd be great. Hey, what's going on, Tariq, man? I love what you're doing here. Um, yeah, I actually just pressed it by accident. But, yeah, I will definitely say that okay. we have to um, really step up and try to, you know, improve the quality of life for our people because at the end of the day, there's no secrets out there anymore. We all know what's going on. There's a, a movement and, you know, it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's trying to distinguish our people and it's, it's not right. And we have to really try and step up and, and, and do what's right for for the people that come after us, for the for the black, you know, boys and girls that are coming up in this world, in this generation. And they're, they're going to have to be, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to live a life that we set up for them. So we have to do right by our our children and children's children. That's all I want to say on that for now. Yeah, yeah there, there was a situation out there in the UK, from what I understand, where a 14-year-old black boy was chased and killed by some little white supremacist kids. And I think they gave the one of the white kids a slap on the wrist like a real low sentence like seven years or something like that did you hear about that out there in the uk yeah i think he got six and a half years yeah so it wasn't uh it wasn't oh. a lot at all yeah so yeah 
So I, I stand with y'all on that, man. I stand with y'all against that injustice out there, man. Real talk. Because my, my UK brothers and sisters are riders. You do have some riders out there in the UK. I rock with them heavy. And injustices like that, especially with any black child, that I'm not with that. That ain't cool. That's one of the reasons why they banned me from the UK. Because I get people over there riled up. They don't even let me go to the UK no more. All right, let me see who else we got here. Now, let's get, um, I think I've had you on before, Nasi. Nasi, I think that's your name. All right, let's get Nasi in here. What's up, Richard? I see Richard. My brother, Richard. Sudan. Hey, what's going on? Nasi, how do I pronounce your name? Nachi. Nachi, okay. You've been on before. I've talked to you before. Yeah, right? it's like, well, it's fair, Nachi. You know, I'm Italian. There you go. A lot of Italians calling up tonight. What's going well, on? The only, the only thing that? separating up, Tyreek, is the Mediterranean Sea. That's it. You, you're doing what? What? Hold on, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear you, sir. You, you do what? No, I said the only thing separating us is the Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, 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 right. So so how do you feel about the situation out there in Texas? Well, you know, I, I think there's, you know, H.R. 8 needs to be passed. And any of the Republicans that are against that, I'm in the middle, just so you know, okay? But yeah. any Republican that is against H.R. 8 to make sure that we have strict background checks is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm fr I'm, look, I'm a, I'm a gun owner, you know, hunting and stuff like that, but... I remember back in the day, Tyreek, I'm not sure how old you are. I grew up in, you know, I graduated in high school in 83. We had gun clubs. Yeah. We had gun clubs back in the day. You know, where they would go in the basement. There was a shooting range and stuff like that. I just don't know what happened. I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. I've posted on social media in various places like, you know, Facebook and, and Twitter just say, what has happened to people nowadays? You know, and, and Tyree, just so you know, I'm from Buffalo. Yeah. That Tops Market. Yeah. My office was around the corner. I used to frequent that place. Mm. The, guard, mm. the guard that got shot, we exchanged, ex exchanged pleasantries when I went there. It was like every other day, I went there like three or four times a week. You know? Yeah. And, and that guy was just like pure smiles every day, every day. Yeah. Mm. Interacting mm. with people, Terry. And I, I, you know, look, I don't know him like a true friend. You know what I mean? Right. But I know him as a person. Right. And I'm, he was an ex Buffalo cop. I know and him and I talked about because I have friends that are on the, the Buffalo Police Department, you know, and it's it just, I, I don't even, it, it's just hard. I feel you, man. It's hard. I feel you. But thank you. Thank you for the call, man. I, I feel you, brother. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's heavy stuff, man. Let's get Volvo Rants. Let's get Volvo Rants, and then we'll get the Chusta on here. We'll get the Chusta. Trying to get as many new faces as I can get. I see you over there, T.S. Giselle. Okay. Um, Volvo, where you at? I see Wani down there. I see a lot of people in the in the lounge down there. Oh, yeah. Shout out what's to you up? guys. What's up, Volvo? Who's that? Uh, Volvo, what's up, Volvo? Oh, shit. How you feel, bro? I'm good. What's on your mind, bro? Oh, uh, man, I just want to say, man, the, the reason why that uh, Blue Lives Matter crowd ain't showing up because that's just white supremacists. They, they not behind that. They every, every time you see that thin blue blue lies flag, that ain't nothing but just some white supremacists. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah they, and they're quiet as church mice now. They're not saying nothing. Usually they all up in here. Whenever we're talking about stuff that ain't got a damn thing to do with them, they all up in here. Right. But where they at now? They 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 they're somewhere chilling right now. They're not even in the mix. They're not saying nothing. They're quiet. Because, you know, they, they know they done messed up. They know they done set a precedent. They know they've created a certain energy out here that has turned around and backfired. So, yeah, they, they feel like they're taking an, an L right now. They're 
forced to admit that these cops that they've been propping up, they're not brave in any sense of the word. They've been exposed as the degenerate cowards they are. You have a bunch of cowards working in law enforcement. You should have been getting the cowards out so that you can get some real brave people working on the force who's going to produce justice. You don't sit up here and incentivize other cowards to flood law enforcement because y'all think you're sticking it to black people. Let's get the Chusta. What's up, the Chusta? What's up? Hey, what's up with your brother? I appreciate you I'm for hosting this space. No doubt. Uh, what I want to say real quick, man, um, just uh, real quick, uh, I think black people need more education on uh, gun legislation and advocacy, because what happened is, is that uh, all we going to do is really uh, a lot of us, not all of us here, but a lot of these black people, we're going to vote for the Democrats who going to then in turn give more money to the police and more money to Ukrainians. And then we're going to have the same problem again. So yeah. I think like bro brothers like you, I appreciate what you're doing, but hopefully you working on like another, another, another movie or something that you can really educate our people on gun legislation legislation and the advocacy behind it brother because like a lot of us is lost out there they really yeah. don't know but i appreciate what you're doing bro and i just i yield my mic on that much respect to you fam all right let's get um captain let's get captain in here captain copium all right captain oh he got out of here he must have hit the button by mistake oh he got out of here real quick when i called his name to come on up I right, know y'all make sure you're not hitting the button by mistake. So when I bring you up, you're ready to chop up some game, family. Come on now. Let's get Kenyatta in here. Let's get Kenyatta. All right. Let me get some names and faces I haven't had on yet. All right. Let's Kenyatta hop on. Kenyatta, turn your microphone on. Hey, Terry. Hey, Kenyatta, how good, are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to touch what the brother just said before that. Um, I think, like, we have to be careful, you know what I mean, who we're voting for. Because, you know, just how this young man in um, Buffalo, how he went there and shot up this whole school. I mean, you know, at the, the grocery store and what it, everything it stood for. So for us to go ahead and, you know, put our votes back into the democratic or even the republican we got to be very mindful of who we're voting for because you know years after years we continue to vote for these people um who are in power and they have don't really have our best interests at heart you know because we continue to get slaughtered in the streets and there you go yes ma'am thank you for the call yeah i 100 percent agree i'm gonna try to get a lot of calls as fast as possible let's get um i remember in real quick and then february I remember. Yeah, I remember where you're at. Okay, well, I hope you remember to get a better phone because your phone is. Yeah, I'm online. Okay, hold on. Um, February, hop on, dear. Hi, Tariq. How are you? I'm good, February. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Now, where are you from, February? I'm from Wisconsin. Okay. Is that you in your picture? Yes. You showing a lot of body there, February. Um, what do you do what do you do out there in Wisconsin? Um, I'm an entrepreneur. Okay. All right. Um okay, I, I won't even go there. But what's on your mind? Oh, okay. I'm I'm just go ahead, go ahead, sis. Go ahead. So what I was gonna say, I think could be um I guess one step we can take. I don't know what the solution is in general for all these mass shootings but like alcohol's always been 21 to purchase they raised the minimum age to purchase tobacco to 21 so maybe mm -hmm. we should raise the age to purchase guns to 21 okay yeah yeah a lot of people are are, are proposing that that the gun um that they're trying to raise it up to 21 but look i don't look this country man has made a religion out of guns you know, the system of white supremacy, white supremacy and guns go hand in hand okay so these people they're not going to give these guns up they're not going to give the guns up at all but the know? thing about that is a lot of the time these are white schools and white children being shot too right right yes yes and and this is the thing that's what they're willing to sacrifice as long as they can maintain white supremacy they know that 
the allowing the written houses and all of these other race soldiers to go around here killing people they know that that inspires other sick white supremacist degenerates and people in the dominant society to go out here and do mass shootings but sacrificing a group of kids every now and then they look at that as the cost of doing business of white supremacy these people don't really care they sit up here and they go through the motions um you know um, talking about how sad it is, but they're not going to take no guns from nobody. They're just not going to do it. These people are going to play the same game because this is really not guns. Let's keep it a, a buck. This whole situation is not about guns. This is not a gun issue. This is a white supremacy issue. And that's the trick bag. See, when black folks um, do a drive-by shooting or whatever, they don't blame guns. Notice when a black person does a shooting, they're not running around talking about guns. Oh my God, we got to stop the guns. The guns, gun, the guns are bad. No, it's black culture that's the problem. You see, when black people are shooting and they're not doing mass shootings like shooting up a bunch of kids, that's something we don't do. Whenever you see black people shooting somebody, it's usually in an economically deprived area and it has something to do with economics. And also, a lot of these shootings that's in black areas are not really done by black people. That's another thing we got to get into later. But if a black person does any kind of gun crime, they blame black culture and they ain't going to go round up guns. They're going to use the RICO statutes and go round up other black people. They're going to say, well, no, no, nigga, you were part of a gang. Um, we just made the gang name up the other day, but you're a part of it. You're part of the Hot Pockets gang. Y'all were eating Hot Pockets, so you're, you're a Hot Pocket gang. And we're going to arrest all the members of the Hot Pocket gang. Oh, they don't make it about guns. They make it about people when it's us. So I want black folks, don't fall into this whole gun legislation talk. That's a trick bag. That's something to deflect away from white supremacist culture. This is all to do with white supremacist culture. This is not about no damn guns. It ain't about guns. It's not about guns. It's not about guns. That's a con game. Because if they didn't have a gun, they'd hurt black people or, or, or do mass killings another way. They'll run people over in cars. They'll use a sword. They'll use a flamethrower. They'll, they'll change up whatever they need to change up. But it's not about guns. It's not about guns at all. This is about violent white supremacist culture. All right, let's get, um, in my opinion on here, let's get him in here. In my opinion. What's up in my opinion? And and the sister early who called up, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to insult the sister. She was showing a lot of body. I'm like, damn, sister. And looking through her picture, she was thick as hell. I was just saying, I'm, I'm about to say, what strip club you work at? It wasn't a diss. It wasn't dissing my sister. That is my sister. What's up? Um, in your mind, in my mind. Want to turn your microphone on, sir? Okay. While we're waiting on him, let's get. LLBJ in here. LLBJ. All right. LLBJ. Let's get LLBJ in here. Hey, Tariq. Hey, uh, I know you said, What's up, brother? I know you said it wasn't about guns or whatever, but don't you think it's also a way to try to disarm black people from protecting themselves? To say, well, let's pass these gun control laws. And let's price out black people from even being able to get past all of these background checks and fees and everything else. Well, yeah, they, they already do that to us to a certain degree anyway. So, yeah, they already do that to us. And also with us, you know, a lot of times we get uh, we can get access to guns on the underground market pretty easy. So, yeah, but we don't do mass shootings like that. We don't. We don't go shooting up schools and all that old nonsense. Um and they're not they're not going to create a gun law that's going to disarm people, not in a system of white supremacy. Let's get Mr. Smartass in here. Mr. Smartass, hop in, brother. All right, turn the microphone on, sir. Because you, you, your profile picture, you got two white women with you. So let one of the white women press the mute What's button. Really good. What's really good? What's really good? What's really good, my brother? What's going on, man? How you doing, sir? Totally awesome. Thanks for asking. How about yourself? I'm good. Where you from, sir? Can you hear me pretty clear? Yes, sir. Where are you from? The womb, first of all. You're from where? 
The womb. You're from the womb. Okay, there you go. And and, sure. and where is that womb? And where was that womb located when it gave birth to you, sir? On the north side of California. There you go. There you go. So what's on your mind besides those two white women in your profile? Hey, man, don't let their profile get you uh, or get anyone in the wrong direction. It's part of a content. It has nothing to do with the price of TN Channel, first of all. But what's on my mind is I love what you do, brother. I totally agree with some of the things these young ladies have just said. And, man, niggas just got to get their shit together. That's all I got to say. And that's what A or E or however you want to define it or to speak on it. You know, just real people in general. All right. Thank you, brother. This brother just wanted to hear himself talk. He doesn't really have anything to say. Well, shout out to you, brother. All right. Sometimes people just want to hear themselves. They smoke them something good. He didn't smoke him something. And remember, it's, it's the end of the month. So a lot of people are not getting the good weed right now. A lot of the weed is stepped on right now. The drugs are not good right now. Y'all don't get the good drugs until the first of the month. So that end of the month high don't really hit the way it's supposed to. Okay. Yeah, you got to smoke your dope with all that junk in and that fentanyl. And it, 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 that, that high don't hit like it's supposed to at the end of the month. So just a few more days, brother. You get you a good, nice toke and you can get your mind together. All right. I won't be on here too, too much longer. Let me get a, I get a couple of calls here. Let's get, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Natural Tura. I think that's your name, dear. Natural Tura. Hop on, beloved. Or, or I don't know if you're a man or a woman, so I won't say that because you never know. Because you'll see a woman in a profile, it'd be a dude. Um, Natural Tura, you want to get on? Um. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out why he came on there with those two white women in his profile um, talking nonsense, <laughs> first of all. Um, the Lord. I mean, seriously. Um, he was talking conscious. And another thing, I seen something, I think it was on Fox News, saying that uh, police are needing new training. They don't need no new training because they're the ones out here training these white supremacists. So, the only training they trying to do is more training to, you know, come against us. It has nothing to do with anyone else. So I don't know what that. Yes, indeed. I, I totally agree. Since they now they're talking about new training, man, police officers and police agencies, man, they get billions of dollars worth of resources, worth of training. And as we saw down there in Texas, it ain't worth two damn dollars. They didn't do nothing with that training. They stood outside and let a, a white man go into school and shoot up a bunch of babies. And they stood outside like a bunch of punks. So all that money went down the drain. All of that refund the police nonsense. That money goes right down the drain. We should have been defunded them. That money could be used to help all these homeless people you know, to get drug facilities. Man, that money could be utilized in so many other ways. Besides paying off these damn race soldiers to sit up here and do nothing. And basically they use that money to to get lawyers for these race soldiers after they harm black people. See, again, all of this refunding the police stuff, all of this is the dominant society thinking that they're sticking it to black people. And all of this stuff turns around and it bites you back on the ass. We better understand how the game works. Okay, I'm not going to be on here too, too long because we almost got 2,000 people in here. We're in here heavy. Um, by the way, guys, have you guys got my book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter? That's my book you can get on Amazon. And I know you've all seen the movie Buck Breaking, my hit documentary film, Buck Breaking. That's available on um, Amazon as well. Go to buckbreakingmovie.com. You can go to Hidden colorsmovie.com to see all my other film titles. We're going to have a streaming service coming soon. And we're working on a new documentary film now. So we're busy over here making things happen. And don't forget, man, this December, we're going to be celebrating the first ever foundational Black American holiday. That's called Aretasasi. That's in the 
foundation of Black American taught language that our people spoke in order to learn how to read when it was illegal for us to do so. Aratasasi means arise in the foundation of Black American taught language. We're going to be celebrating that holiday starting December 24th every year. This is going to be the first year we are taking control of our culture, ladies and gentlemen. Um, anyway, you guys go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio, subscribe to my YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Should I get one more call in here before I go? Should I get one more? Because we do have a lot of people in here. We've got a lot of folks in here. And um, let me talk to some more people. Let's get Mr. Panatech in here. Mr. Panatech. All right, Mr. Panatech, where you at? All right. Come on, Mr. Panatech. All right, man. I'll let you on and you ain't saying nothing. Y'all make sure your microphones are good. All right, let's get um this brother Wanto. Let's get Wanto in here. And don't raise your hand unless you're ready to get on. And then we'll get, um, hold on, who is this? Well, I, I didn't put somebody on by mistake. Okay, hold on. Wanto, where you at? Okay, let's get Gila. Let's get Gila in here. Gila Wood. Okay, Gila. Gila, turn the microphone on. All right. The Wanto, Gila, or Mr. Panatech. Either one of you. Okay, while we're waiting on them, let's get um all right, hold on. Let's get uh Garang. I right, Garang the Great. Come on, y'all get your phones together. All right, Garang, hop on, man. And let us know what part of Africa you're from. Based on your profile, I can tell you from Africa. So, Garang, hop on, sir. All right. Come on, Garang. Golly. Y'all get it together. Do not get into speaking queue if you're not ready to get on. Y'all slowing down the game here. All right. Y'all are slowing the game down. Gila, you want to try it again? And we'll get Eldon in here. We'll try Eldon. Tariq. What, what's up, Gila? Hey, man. I just wanted to hop in and talk a little bit about I was watching some of your uh, some of your highlight reels earlier. And uh, okay, Go ahead. Go ahead. Say that again because my phone rang. Go ahead. Say it again. Uh, I, I, was, I was watching some of your highlight reels earlier, and, and you were talking a little bit about how um, – Turkish people are black, and I just I just wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit. Or, uh... yeah, the original people over there in Turkey were black. The original ones, like all the way in the Middle East. And I was in um, Istanbul. I was over there in Turkey not too long ago, and I saw some of the ancient carvings and things like that. And many of them were just regular black folks. They were black people, the same kind of black folks you see walking around. People would lighten up later on down the line, but a lot of the people over in the Middle East so-called Middle East, because that's something that was named later. Many of these people were originally black. Even in Asia, I mean, hell, we go all the way to Asia. The, many of the original Asians were black, and I've seen them with my own eyes. So um, you still have some black um, Turkish people over there. In fact, many of the Moors were um, Turkish. They would use the term Turkish Moors. And so, yeah, there's a there was a black presence over there. So all right yeah yeah um so yeah that was just something i was i was watching today and came to mind but um yeah totally uh with you on the um on the police issue i think it's it's something where you know i've always felt like it's a profession that attracts the wrong kind of character so uh definitely needs to be scrutinized more heavily okay now where are you from i'm from new jersey now you white man Absolutely. Okay. And where's your family from originally? Um, Ireland. Okay. And when did they immigrate over here? Uh, so 
on my mother's side in the late 19th century, and my father was actually a first-generation immigrant. He was fresh off the boat. So. There you go, my man. All right, well, thank you so much, brother. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Eldon, are you in here, brother? Yeah, bro, I'm here. What's going on? Thanks for having me on. No doubt. What's on your mind, sir? So I think it's really important uh, as Black people that we figure out a way to uh, unite because we can understand that the police aren't aren't here to help us as we can see by the the fact that dude, these police had a uh, a drill in a Uvalde school and they still wound up doing nothing. But right. I think if there was a way for us to combine our resources as Black people and you know try to figure out a way that we could fund the Black Panther Party or the Not Fucking Around crew to be around to be like our own kind of police force, like those brothers. They already got, you know, AR-15s. They already got handguns, and they already trained. If I feel like if we all, if they kind of banded together and kind of got together to to form one really big unit. Okay, now okay, let me let me people. stop you. Let me let me stop you for a second, right? Yeah. Now you got to understand when there are certain groups mm -hmm. that are put in place by the dominant society that we got to watch out for. You name the in, okay. in fact. Now you I yeah. Mean, at this point, you know, you need to know. If you don't know what's really going on with the... No, I don't. Okay, see, this is why you need to be abreast on what's going on. Okay. This is why we got to have... Um, Y'all got to listen to the Black Grassroots Media to understand what's going on. And that's another problem. A lot of people in our community, y'all don't have the right information. Um, you, get, you get pertinent information real late. Too many of us get information from the shade room world star gossip and gossip sites and a lot of people don't know what's really going on only a certain sector of our society really listens to the grassroots and that's what we do over here we stay on top of information real time yeah and the fact that you mentioned that organization means you're not up on the game brother that organization man and the leader of it is clearly somebody who was put in place the grandmaster j guy years ago like last year i exposed okay. that this guy was working with secret service i have it on video this guy doing okay work. i didn't know that yeah yeah and another member who um got into a shooting incident down in florida was hiding out with some in fact folks and they turned him in so yeah yeah we gotta really watch what's going on out here not just get into just the common sloganism, like we all got to get together and whoop de whoop. We need to really understand what's going on out here so that we can move properly and not make mistakes and not get caught up with agents and infiltrators. And that's no disrespect to my brother, but just in general, we got to be on top of our game. Let's get, um, um, what's your name, brother? You got a bunch of Anton Bisco. Let's get Anton Bisco in here. Yo, what's good, Drake? What's going on, sir? Now, where are you from, Anton? Buffalo, New York, man. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So you're a white man from Buffalo. So what, what's the vibe out there in Buffalo right now? Man, it's kind of fucked. That shit over on that tops, man. I used to go there almost every once a week when I was working that area. So I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm glad I wasn't there at that, that moment, you know? Now you but were working I, in that area. What were you doing in the area? I'm a plumber. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now, what do you think about the police now in relations to the situation in Texas? Uh, first, let me ask you this. Are you a Kyle Rittenhouse supporter? Do you believe that Kyle Rittenhouse did no wrong? No, I, I think he was he was justified legally, but I don't know if he should have even been there to begin with. To be okay, honest. so you, you, you're a supporter of Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, you're supporting him. If you think he was justified there legally... That's supporting him. You support Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, man. Dude yeah. got chased down, right? That, uh, no. No. He went there. He was the one chasing the folks down. He went there pointing his gun at people. He planned to go there, and he got the white treatment, the white supremacist treatment, which was immunity from law. So, no. He wasn't chased down. He went there to harm people, and they were trying to defend themselves from his ass. You understand? I guess, man. You're going to yeah. say what you want to say, but... Oh well, what's, well, what's, well, what's that got to do with them anyway? Oh, well, 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 look at the actions. Look at look at what it's caused. Look at how it has influenced other situations. So now there's been an uptick in these type of cowardly ambush shootings, and now look at what's going on. More people are dying because of that influence, sir. How do you feel about that? I 
can't say it's influenced from him, but it's fucked. What happened here is fucked, man. Yeah, it is influenced from him. You, you better believe it's influenced. The uptick started right that, after. The that uptick, Buffalo the, shooter was fucking insane, man. Oh, he wasn't that insane. Fucking crazy. He, he wasn't that insane to write that manifesto and to case that place out. He wasn't that insane. Oh, he wasn't insane. Nah, I mean, he, nah. he, copied, he copied the Christchurch dude that's uh, also fucked. Both of yeah. them are fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, they the, the Christchurch people and these folks sit up here and do these brazen um, mass killings and then throw up these white supremacist hand signals like your boy Kyle Rittenhouse did after he killed people. And then people try to justify one and then try to condemn the other. No, it doesn't work like that, sir. These guys are one and the same. And if you let one go, that just um, um, incentivizes the next one. And this is where we are right now. So a lot of y'all are still supporting Kyle Rittenhouse and y'all still making excuses for him. And that's not really turning out too good for you, is it? Dude, I think that's a crazy jump in logic to say Kyle Rittenhouse and these mass shooters are one and the same. That's... They are. They are. They are absolutely one and the same. How? Um, the same way they say that all black people are somehow responsible for Chicago. Every time something happens, we're told that what about Chicago? So we're responsible for anything that happens in Chicago. That's something that the black community is somehow on the hook for. Um, when they were doing these Asian hate crimes, ABC News had a white man on there talking about the black community is doing these hate crimes and the black leaders should do something about it. So they made all black people responsible for Asian hate crimes, which foundational black Americans are not doing any Asian hate crimes. The people doing their so-called hate crimes against Asians are these Caribbean immigrants up there in New York and San Francisco. So the same way we're on the hook for all of this stuff, anything happens in Chicago or anything that happens to an Asian person at the hand of a black person, all of us are somehow responsible. The school shooters and other people like them the, the Rittenhouses and the people who supported Kyle Rittenhouse are all responsible and they all have blood on their hands as far as I'm concerned, sir. Okay, I get that, man. But yeah, anyone saying that all black people are responsible for Chicago or just ignorant as fuck. Oh, but they do y'all do it all the time, sir. I mean that that's the go to I, I, I get that. They do. They they that's, do it all the always, time. That's always the scapegoat. Anytime they say, Oh, this shit happened. What about Chicago? Well, exactly. Chicago, they the do it all the time. Thing. All of us are we're all responsible for Chicago. So damn it, you guys are all responsible for Kyle Rittenhouse and all of these other teen shooters. That's what that's the correlation. So if I'm responsible for Chicago, and there is definitely a direct yep. correlation. Because look at the uptick of crime. Look at the uptick. But anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 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 do you still do plumbing in black neighborhoods? How, how do you how do you feel about the George Floyd thing before I let you go? The George Floyd thing. How do you feel about that? Um, this is the anniversary of the George Floyd situation. How do you feel about the George Floyd situation? I mean, regardless of who he was before it, he he got fucking killed, man. He got straight up murdered. I got no love for police. I got no love for him. So. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you so much. See, these people see they see these folks still want to hold on to their Kyle Rittenhouse thing. See, no, 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 no. Y'all not going to play that game and act like there's no co correlation between Kyle Rittenhouse and the damn Texas shooter. You're not going to play that game. There is a correlation. Even the FBI has put out a memo saying that there's an uptick. There's a recent uptick in these active shooter mass killings and that uptick came right after Kyle Rittenhouse you know good and well there's a correlation there is absolutely a correlation if you put you you got Kyle Rittenhouse out here doing ambush killings that were premeditated and you have a court system that sat up here and basically defended that nonsense sat up here and not let information get introduced in court coddled this guy you had a judge bend over backwards for this guy put on performative white supremacy in a courtroom, let this man get in the courtroom and fake cry, do the fakest cry ever, and y'all still said that he was innocent and he did nothing wrong, that set a horrible precedent, and now you're feeling the brunt of it because now that energy has come back to you. And you still want to hold on to it. White supremacy is a suicidal phenomenon. These people will die and sacrifice their children in order to maintain white supremacy. They don't want to admit that they've taken an L that they've caused themselves. They will sacrifice their damn children in order to have the privilege of maintaining 
systematic white supremacy, knowing that they can just stick it to the black folks. Like you're sticking it to us. No, you're sticking it to yourself. You're sticking it to yourselves. They're running around here talking about you don't like the cops no more. Notice that theme. Ain't nobody, they're not co-signing cops right now. They they still want to co-sign Kyle. You know, they still want to hold on to Kyle. That was a very uh, important symbolic victory for them. Kyle Rittenhouse was very important to the white supremacist power structure. But you took a loss with that victory. You see, you, you cut off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. That's how white supremacy, see, white supremacy, the cost of maintaining it is becoming too great. That's the problem. See, you want to maintain white supremacy, but now the cost of it is too great. The backlash and the ramifications, it's becoming too great. It's, it's eating itself alive. You dig? So it's best to just produce justice. All right, let's get, um, um, Jer, um, J E R. Hop in, sir. Yo, brother Tariq, what's going on, man? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Good, sir? man. Good, man. Uh, I just want to uh, have something, but uh, the caller, I think it was a caller, a couple callers ago, talking about the Black Panther, man. Let's be real, man. A lot of these white folks don't want to lose their guns because they're scared of black people, bro. You know what I'm saying? They already know. They're yeah. scared. They worry what's going to happen if, you know. They lose their guns, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, nah, I wanted to uh talk about. I see brother Marcel is in here, man. Y'all went, y'all y'all went crazy on the uh Fox Soul, man. I want to congratulate y'all brothers. Y'all went in, man. Oh yeah, shout out to brother Marcel. All my South Carolina people, y'all know y'all need to get out there and support our brother Marcel. Yeah. Yes, Definitely. indeed. My South Carolina people, my they okay, brother. Your phone. I don't know what you were doing with that phone, brother. But yeah, y'all gotta support our brother Marcel out there in South Carolina. Y'all gotta, gotta, gotta support our brother. That is very important right now. We gotta make a, we gotta send a message with getting our brother in office down there. Y'all need to go support Marcel Dixon if you are out there in South Carolina. Find his district, get out there, and support that brother. He's going for Jim Clyburn's seat. Get Clyburn up out of there. All y'all listening. Y'all go to Marcel's page. Y'all scroll down. Y'all see his page. Y'all support that brother. All right, let me get up out of here because um, my wife is in there cooking. So let me get busy. Um, but a lot of folks in here tonight, man. Shout out to you guys. Again, go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio. Um, go to hiddencolorsfilm.com to check out my movies. Go to officialfba.com to check out the um, um, T-shirts and all the good stuff that we have. I'm out of here, man. Y'all have a great night. Papi Kute and Lola Vuve to the family.